Andre Van Broen. Andre Van Broen, better known as Mr. Barcelona, was born on April 4 in 1910. He died on March 8 in 1999. He is the man that made the town of Law, in West Flanders, famous in the world of pigeon racing. Born into a farming family, Andre Van Broen was familiar with hard work. His family grew flax, a key constituent in the production of linen, on their farm in the region of Houston near Ghent. Andre learned the trade and the family prospered as yields and demand were high in mid-1920s Europe. In 1925 homesickness led to the family returning to their homeland in the region of Leyi, and they quickly resettled back into familiar surroundings. Although Van Broan's parents had prospered, it was Andre's paternal uncle who was the businessman in the family. Uncle Jerome Van Broan recognized that the prosperity given from the flax would be short-lived as world trends were going away from natural fabrics. He persuaded Andre's parents to let him take young Andre under his wing and train him in the furniture business. His uncle Jerome also happened to be one of the most successful pigeon fanciers of the region. Living on the farm during the week, Andre traveled to his uncle's at the weekend. It was on these trips that he spent his pigeon apprenticeship. His uncle knew everyone important and successful in pigeons, and young Andre was eager to learn at the feet of these masters. On bicycle, his uncle and he would visit the likes of Benut and Olsen, Lagas and Ingel Munster, Vatikavai and Winjean, Varik and Deerlik, and many more. Despite his father's protestations, Andre fitted traps in the roof of the family's barns and proceeded to accumulate the best birds that his uncle possessed. His uncle was a very impatient man with his birds, even if a bird had won the week before, if it failed the following week. He disposed of it and this is how Andre at 17 had acquired some of the best birds in the area. In his later life Andre recounted one instance when his uncle brought him a young blue cock, not yet molted, which has strayed into his loft. His uncle said, You have to use him Andre. It is definitely a pigeon from very good blood. His uncle showed him the bird, and on its wing was stamped the name Deprez, from a Timpuis, who was a friend of his uncle. On hearing the name Deprez, another top local fancier of the area, Louis Sloss, insisted that Jerome give him the bird instead of a mere youth. The reason being that Deprez was the son-in-law of the famous Julian Commine, from Leersnord. Andre didn't particularly like the bird but upon seeing the reaction of Sloss, he bred from it and its children had immediate success. Andre was only 17 years young when he started winning pigeon racing on the sprint races. Unfortunately, his natural flair for everything about pigeon racing and the quality of birds provided by his uncle brought him too much success, too quickly, for the liking of many of his older competitors, and he quickly found himself excluded in some clubs because he won too many prizes and championships at such a tender age. This made him decide to enter in the long-distance racing, the national races. Andre casually said to his uncle. If you want that blue pigeon back, then you're welcome to it. Andre wasn't in love with the pigeon at the time. Andre's uncle then gave the pigeon to a young fancier from Kern called German Desplenter. He raced fantastically with youngsters from this pigeon. Uncle Jerome, upon seeing these results, eventually woke up and the pigeon was returned. From this pigeon he bred the strain of the old Steyr from 1932. He raced like a bull from Claremont and yes, that's how he got the nickname, De Steyr from Lau. This pigeon also won a first from Orleans and Tours. These early successes meant that André soon came into contact with the Catrice brothers, with Dupont from Herceau, and with many other fanciers at the top at the time. They often sat together in the pubs by the pigeon societies. They told each about of their experiences and André listened to all these serious discussions like an upcoming star. During his early days of national racing, he traveled around in the only car in West Flanders, it was owned by Rini Molian from Leper. He was rubbing shoulders with many wealthy fanciers, all the while having to fund everything from his pocket money. Unlike modern generations he kept quiet and listened, always wanting to hear what he could use to make his birds and himself better. 
On one occasion Andre was trying to buy a bird from the Catrice brothers. It took him seven months before he could get hold of the pigeon, and then only with the intervention of Ernest Deramos, who was a friend of the Catrice brothers. At the time the Catrices had been having terrible problems with pylon wires, losing many good birds to them. He had gone upstairs to the loft to look at the birds and saw a bird on the landing board with the telltale sign of a wing hanging down, an obvious victim of the wires. Gerard Catrice said to Jerome Van Bruijn, Look at that pigeon sitting there it is a brother of our Louis. Louis being the best Catrice bird of that time. Andre pretended not to understand what was being said. Later when Oscar Catrice, the family patriarch, came into the loft Andre asked him about the injured bird and how much for it, not wanting to let on how good the bird was, Oscar just said. That's not a pigeon, it's rubbish. Seven months later the bird was eventually in the Van Broen loft. At one point, Andre met M. Julian Combine, who came to basket his pigeons. He recalls the meeting and the history of the blue cock given to him by his uncle, Huel Van Broen, young fancier, is how he addressed Andre. With which pedigree do you play the big drum here? Combine asked. Andre hardly dared tell him. Andre said, Mr. Combine, don't be angry and then told him the events as they happened. Do you have the pigeon, he asked Andre, do you have it in your loft? Huel, he said, there is no better sort for breeding. That is a son from my Napoleon, with one of the very best breeding hens from Paul Lamote from Mosgrone. Now, it is important that you should know that Paul Lamote was the leader in the pigeon sport at the time. You couldn't have a better pigeon, said Combine. That is the best pigeon racing at the moment. Look, he said, you can keep it, it's in good hands. But, when it suits you, you have to breed a couple of youngsters out of it for me. The success he had with him however was cut short, and unfortunately Van Broan was never able to breed those youngsters for Mr. Combine as the Second World War broke out. Keeping his birds throughout the war was a struggle, they were no longer prized racers but potential sources of food for an increasingly hungry nation. During this period, he was fortunate to have an ally in Dr. Kuhn, who as well as being a medical doctor, was also a very keen pigeon fancier, and was able to assist in keeping the Van Broen colony safer than many of his compatriots' birds that were deported to Germany. After the war while many others had to start again, Van Broen still had many of his birds to breed from. The Van Broen strain is bred from the inbreeding of the lines, Catrice, Remy Bice, Stichelbout, Willekeet Brothers, Labieu, Professor Vangrembergen, and De Bear. The best pigeons from West Flanders brought together in the strain of Van Broen. The entire history of Van Broen's success from Barcelona has its origin with the Zwart Chateau from Daniel Lebeau. He won first national when Van Broen won second national with the Steyr. Van Broen recounts the story after the race when Lebeau said to him. Andre my pigeon was lucky to come home along with your steer, the steer however went after a good looking hen and my bird came straight into the loft. So in fact Van Broen, it was because of a pretty lady that meant you were beaten. <laughs>